Our discussion dealing with average power thus far has dealt with um, the average power associated with an isolated resistance resistor, an isolated capacitor or inductor. But what about the situation where we have both resistance and inductance or resistance, inductance, and capacitance all together in the same circuit? In general, the angle between the current and the voltage is not, or the, the, the phase of the current and the phase of the voltage will not be the same. But also, in general, they won't be 90 degrees out of phase with each other, with each other the way they were when, um, when we were talking about the voltage and current associated with a, with a single inductor or a single capacitor. So in general, we're going to have a voltage V that has some phase voltage theta sub V. And we'll have a current which will have its own phase term theta sub I. Once again, the instantaneous power is going to be just the product of those two, or this expression here. Now, if we subtract theta sub i from both of them, effectively we're referencing our phase now as though the current had a zero phase. And the phase angle for the voltage will be theta sub v minus theta sub i. So originally we have the phasor voltage and the phasor current. Both have non-zero phases. If we subtract that angle right there, theta sub i from it, from obviously from i we bring that down to a reference angle of zero, and v then is brought down that same amount, and the angle between those two will still be theta sub v minus theta sub i. So we're creating a new variable, theta, which is simply equal to the phase difference between the voltage and the current. We're going to find that in our circuits, much of what our interest is focuses on just the difference between those two and not what the absolute phases of the two are themselves. So we define this theta and replace the theta v minus theta i in this cosine term, and we end up with the instantaneous power is equal to v sub p i sub p cosine of omega t plus theta times cosine of omega t. Now, with that expression, which is rewritten right here, let's go through and calculate the average power. To do so, we're going to need to use a couple of trigonometric identities. First of all, we have the cosine of one thing multiplied by the cosine of another thing. Using the trig identity, cosine A, cosine B is equal to that. We can then replace the product of the cosine terms with these two sum terms with the one-half factor out in front. Then taking this cosine term, which involves two terms, 2 omega t plus theta, and expanding that using this trigonometric identity, we end up with the cosine theta term is still there. This, this term has now been expanded into these two terms, where we have a cosine of theta factor here and a sine theta factor here, neither of which are functions of time. We'll take advantage of that here in just a second. And then we've also absorbed this 1 half into the V sub P, I sub P, and we're now talking about the effective voltage and the effective current. With the instantaneous power in this form, we're now able to do the integration associated with calculating the average power. So the integral over one period of the instantaneous power then and dividing by t gives us 1 over t v effective i effective. These two terms both have the cosine of theta as a factor. Pull that outside of the integral of these first two terms, and we're left with the integral from 0 to t of 1 plus cosine of 2 omega t dt. Then we still have the integral associated with this, which is minus pulling the sine of theta outside the integral, because once again, theta is not a function of time. Let's just remind ourselves that theta here is equal to theta sub v minus theta sub i. So it's just the difference between the voltage and current phasors, and then times the integral. If we do a little algebraic manipulation and take this term, v effective, i effective, and distribute it to both this cosine term here and the sine term, we then have v effective, i effective, cosine theta, 
times the integral over the period 1 plus cosine omega t. And then we also have this v effective i effective sine of theta times the integral. Now again, we're calculating the average power. The average power calculation involves integrating over the period. And as we have seen in the past, when we integrate over what is effectively two times this period, this term here and this term here will have no contribution to our average power. And we're left with the integral of 1, which comes out then simply as t evaluated from 0 to t. The t's cancel. And we're left with the average power p is equal to v effective i effective cosine theta. This is a pretty significant and fairly um, important expression that we're going to come back to. But before we do that, let's just look at some, I don't know, symmetry or just what it is. But you'll notice that we have a v effective i effective cosine theta term here. And we have a v effective i effective sine theta term here. We've already calculated the average power as being this v effective i effective cosine theta. But for now, let's look at or let's define another term, q, which is equal to v effective i effective sine theta. We then have this term here, p, which is our average power. It represents the power that is converted from electrical power to non-electrical power in the circuit. It's known as the average power or the real power. And then we have this term over here, which we're now going to define as or call it the reactive, the reactive power. And we're going to see that it has a very significant role also. But for now, just let's just take it that there's the symmetry in these two terms, which would maybe motivate us to write P and Q. P has the units of watts, which is volts times amps. You'll notice that Q also has the units of volts times amps. But to distinguish between this average power and this reactive power, we'll refer to the, the units of Q as VAR, or volt amps reactive, or VAR. with those definitions of P and Q, come back up here to this expression for our instantaneous power and replace the V effective I effective cosine theta and the V effective I effective sine theta with P and Q. And we end up with this, or distributing the P on through. We have then the instantaneous power in terms of this average power and the reactive power. So we have three terms. This term here is a constant. It's not a function of time. It represents, again, the average power, the power that's distributed or dissipated through the load. We then have two other um, power terms. These are both functions of time. And as we've seen in previous discussions, with them oscillating, the cosine and the sine functions oscillate between plus or minus 1. These two terms represent power that at times are positive mean that there's power being placed into the load. And then during the other half of the cycle, the sign is reversed, and that power is then pushed back into the circuit. So this is a constant power factor, or power term. And these two terms are terms which represent an oscillation of power in and out of the load. Let's summarize our findings then. We've defined P and Q as two very closely related terms. Both of them have constants, or both of them are, function, are constants, not functions of time. But both of them involve this V effective I effective term. One is multiplied by the cosine of theta, one multiplied by the sine of theta. Now let's look at P and Q in a resistor. In a resistor, theta sub V equals theta sub I, or theta V minus theta I is 0. So cosine theta, or theta again, is theta v minus theta i. So when theta v minus theta i is 0, we have the cosine of 0. And the average power in a resistor is simply v effective times i effective times the cosine of 0, which is 1. Q in a resistor, 
Q always is equal to V effective I effective sine theta, but in a resistor where theta is equal to zero, the sine of zero is zero, there is no reactive power component in a resistor. The power in a resistor is all real or average power. P and Q in an inductor. Under these circumstances, good old Eli, the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees, or theta sub V is equal to theta sub I plus 90 degrees, or theta sub V minus theta sub I is positive 90 degrees. So P, which is proportional to the cosine of theta, with theta being 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 is 0. And as we saw in previous videos, the average power associated with an inductor or across an inductor alone is 0. On the other hand, the sine of theta, theta is 90 degrees, the sine of theta is positive 1, and we have then Q in an inductor is equal to V effective I effective times sine of 0, or sine of 90, which is 1. That gives us Q for an inductor is equal to positive V effective times I effective. Finally, let's look at P and Q in a capacitor. Once again, because the angle between the voltage and the current is 90, with this time it's actually nine, negative 90 degrees, the cosine of negative 90 degrees is also 0, so the average power associated with the capacitor is 0. Q in a capacitor is dependent upon, again, upon the, the sine of theta. This time theta is negative 90. The sine of negative 90 is negative 1. And so Q in a capacitor is equal to negative V effective, I effective, cosine theta. So we make the observation then that in an inductor and a capacitor, P is both 0, but the Q is it's a positive Q in an inductor and a negative Q in a capacitor.